neighborhoods. <laughs> Here's a neighborhood in Hawaii. <laughs> oh look, somebody's got an American flag. That's good. Yep. There's the mail truck. Let's get on with the radio show. Ah, oh, you know what that is? That's the taste of Saturday morning because it's JW's radio. Again, here we are. Uh, Saturday morning again. It is rolled around. Here we are again. Actually, you know, for, for a change this time, it seemed like it, it took a little while to get here. <laughs> it took a little while. Um, mainly, I think you know what it is because there was some really good news on the channel that I wanted to break to you folks. Uh, really cool news. Some really neat things to talk about. Some interesting things to talk about. <laughs> okay, and then uh, of course the uh, the cool stuff under the uh, mystery shirt, cloth, whatever we got that's laying around that we could cover the surprise for you. Okay, anyway. Really appreciate everybody that watches these videos, that tunes into these videos. It has been amazing. Um, the amount of support the channel's been getting has been amazing. Every day the numbers climb, and I couldn't be happier because it's really cool to share things with you folks uh, on this channel, uh, doing gun reviews and all that. And um, furthermore, for those of you that are interested, um, I know some of you are, some of you that watch these radio shows, uh, basically are subscribed but anyway check out Batjack JW's second channel called the Combat 86 radio show there is actually I've been doing it um, as daily vlogs it is um, just me vlogging throughout the day what I'm doing what we're getting ready to do so I haven't actually started the vlog today we will start it after this radio show how about that so anyway so if you're interested the daily vlogs are on there it's called day in the life a vlog from Vatjack jack jw bat jack <laughs> or vlog i guess that's what they call it vlog i must have picked that up from hickok 45 i think that's the way he pronounces it or what or say it says it or man it's good to start the morning off with coffee i tell you okay so so if you've seen hopefully uh, you've seen during the week we did some interesting videos um we checked out some of the, uh, the the grips I had made, and those got sent off uh, to a really good friend of mine uh, that I met here on YouTube. Uh, he bought them from me. I did sell them. Uh, really cool to have initiated that and to come, in a sense, full circle, you know, and talk about, you know, just uh, me starting from where it started. But anyway, I won't get into all that because that will be a video for Monday. So check out that video on Monday called Full Circle, where I talk about my journey into the grip making with John Wayne's grips, the Cimarron Rooster Shooter, all that fun stuff. Anyway, hopefully you also seen the introduction to wax bullets. I uh, wanted to talk about the wax bullets. You saw in the last radio show, uh, last JW's radio, we talked about the wax bullets. Anyway, so I did the introduction to it, just kind of showed you how it worked. I've been getting a lot of questions about it, uh, a lot of things like how do you clean it, what, what does it do to your gun. It really doesn't do much. Uh, you know, yes, it, the, your gun gets a little dirty from it, but uh, in no sense is it anywhere near as bad as shooting live ammo, uh, especially like cast lead stuff where you're letting up your barrel. If anything, it might help you clean the barrel because you're waxing it. <laughs> but actually, um, you know, I put a little bit of uh, oil down the barrel to shoot them so it, it does stick less, you know, but um, I'm using the 45 Colt, by the way, and I found that using a 20 gauge uh, shotgun brush works really well because it sticks really well to the bore. It's a little bit larger, obviously, and it sticks to the bore and cleans it out really well. Okay, so yesterday, hopefully you saw the Guns and Movies uh, video. I talked a lot about how my inspiration in Guns and Movies uh, came about. I, you know, I, that's really my very first guns uh, that I've been, I mean, in the beginning, I bought guns and still buy guns because of a movie I grew up with watching. My very first gun I ever bought was a Walther PP. That's Police Pistola. That is like the PPK, but not exactly the PPK. And the reason because of that is because if you watch Dr. No with Sean Connery, the original James Bond movie, of course it's not the original original, the Casino Royale was before that and it really was not really, 
you know, anyway, we won't get into all that. But the facts are, Dr. No is the very first uh, James Bond movie with Sean Connery. And if you notice, he has that particular gun. It's a Walther PP. Strange. I actually have a video on it called James Bond's Guns. I show both the PPK and the PP and all that. But yeah, that was my first gun I ever bought, and it was related to James Bond. You know, and of course, I uh, had to buy a Model 29 because of Dirty Harry. I bought a Beretta because of Lethal Weapon and Die Hard and <laughs> so on and so on. Um, but the second real uh, gun I chased after was the Smith & Wesson Snub Nose 38 Six Shot K-Frame Model 10. And that was an interesting gun that I actually didn't know anything about it when I bought it. All I knew was it was the gun from Witness. In fact, I didn't even know that that's what it was called. I just remember seeing it in the movie Witness, and it came out in the 80s with Harrison Ford and uh, Kelly McGillis, I believe. Um, anyway, so I saw it in that movie the very first time, really the scene where the kid opens the drawer. It really shows it up close, and the thing that attracted me the most was the gun looked like a, just a whopper of a, of a snub nose 38. Normally when you think of that, you think of somebody strapping at their ankle or whatever. This thing is indeed a monster. At least it looked like that in the, in the, in the movie. And when I actually laid my hands on one, it is a whopper of a gun. I've got quite a few videos on that on the channel. Check them out. But anyway, all right, so getting started, we're getting all the news out of the way. Um, those of you that are following my other channel, daily vlogs, you already saw uh, or already had seen the issue a little bit. But the issue got further, not with mine, but with a friend of mine, okay? And we're talking about the Glock. We both have the same gun, Glock 23 Gen 4s. Okay, so we, uh, his, he's been having this issue with, um, I, I, I call it premature slide lock back, whatever, anyway, I'm sure there's a proper tactical term for it. Um, but when he's shooting, uh, the last round out of the magazine, his gun goes around loaded. Um, click and that's it you slide doesn't lock back um, I, not premature slide lock back what am I talking about I haven't had enough of this stuff in, in a, <laughs> this morning yet what is happening is on the last shot his slide is not locking back um, now we thought maybe it could be because he's holding the, 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 the slide down now mind you you know to a lot of us uh, the gun stuff is really like the back of our hands, second nature. So um, anyway, I we decided to take out his slide stop and see if the spring was tuned and all that, which I honestly, I, now that I'm thinking about it, I really think he's just pushing down on that, that slide stop. Um, anyway, so the after cleaning it, taking it apart and cleaning it, and for those of us that know Glocks, they're very simple. Uh, they're, you know, you could do this thing blindfolded, really. I mean, they're really simple to take apart. That's kind of why I like them a lot. They're simple to take apart. They're extremely reliable, and they shoot well. So uh, all those things make it uh, attractive for me, especially the simplicity of it. That was really key for me. When I choose a gun, I always start to look at, before I even buy it, I start to look at the schematics of it. How many parts is in that gun? Um, unless it's a movie gun, right? Because <laughs> apparently... Uh, when I bought the M Beretta 92FS, I uh, did not realize that that had a laundry list of parts. Anyway, so the Glock is very simple. We stripped it, uh, put it back together. Now, the function test, a lot of us uh, know what is the function test that you do to check the, uh, the, the function of the gun. So you pull the trigger, holding it down, racking the slide, letting up on the trigger. You'll notice it resets. You can repeat the process a couple of times, okay, and you know it works. When we did this function test of his, the slide took off. <laughs> um, I've never seen that with a Glock. Never have I seen that. And I'm not saying that I'm like a Glock professional or I've got all this tons of experiences with them, but I'm not saying that by all means. I'm just saying that that was something I've never seen and I have not actually seen it in the videos. And through my experience with Glocks, the, the terms failure or broke, you know, or broken, usually you don't hear that 
in the same sentence of Glock. At least it is for me. Um, as you guys seen, hopefully you've been following the channel uh, quite a bit to see all the things I've done with this gun. It's pretty, uh, pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, all the Glock versus torture test videos that we did with this very Glock, and it's still going strong. Um, never seen nothing like that before. I, upon research and talking to a friend of mine that's a longtime Smith, he said it had something to do with the um, the lockup, the the locking, um, the slide lock inside. You know, something that has to do with the spring. Maybe something happened to it, or you know, whatever. So that's going to be a journey to look at because I've never seen that happen. If you guys have ever seen that happen or know of that happening, let me know in the comments because I am very befuddled about it. I don't know. I've never seen that, and you know. Again, it, it's almost like it is this, you know, uh, you know, back to the gun thing where guns for a lot of us has become second nature. It's like our second skin. You know, it's a, a, a friend of mine des described it as using a spoon. When you use a spoon to eat, you're not really even thinking about things. You're just, you know, so that's kind of how guns are like for the majority of us. I, I feel like, you know, it just it's just kind of a thing, you know, so. Um, I, I tend to loosely use the term, well, what did you do, <laughs> you know, kind of, um, anyway, <laughs> but I don't know, I, I'm just as uh, lost and, you know, in a state of cognitive dissonance about that. <laughs> that was a joke, for those of you that were following the vlog channel, you'll, you'll get that. <laughs> all right, so um, aside from things breaking down and all that, um, news on the channel I'll get into the news on the channel this main channel absolutely amazing this week we had surpassed 1 million views yes 1 million views on this main channel uh, that is uh, counting everything uh, just we passed the 1 million view mark we are actually looking at 1 million and 10,000 views um, thank you I can't I, you guys did that, not me. I mean, you you folks did that. You folks have supported this channel. A lot of you have been there since the beginning, and a lot of you since you've subscribed, you've been just on it. Every video, you've commented on every single video that comes out on this channel, and it is amazing. That kind of uh, dedication, that kind of support, um, it's like a brotherhood. You guys are like the Batjack army. Um, you guys are there, man. Uh, it's really cool. I can't thank you enough. I can't uh, express how shocked I am because coming up at July 4th will be two years on this YouTube thing. I've been making videos for two years now on July 4th. And to have gotten this kind of a following, you know, I mean, over 2,000 subscribers, over 1 million views, it, it just is amazing. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, in a lot of ways, like I said, YouTube has changed um, changed my life in a lot of ways because of making these videos. I was, you know, just a lot of people that have known me for years. Uh, when I told them I was doing this YouTube thing, they really was like, I mean, what? You know, I mean, it was almost like somebody watching The Exorcist for the first time or something. You know. Um, anyway, so they were really shocked, and I, to me. You know, it's done a lot, and I um, actually just you know with a lot of things that has uh, I've watched a video or two where people talk about how YouTube has displaced a lot of things for them, and for me, uh, it's been a stressful stressful month. Um, it's just been stressful, emotionally draining, and but I tell you though, making videos for you folks and doing this YouTube thing has just occupied my time, and it made it makes me forget about those those problems you know it makes me feel like those problems don't exist and they don't matter anymore uh, that's how much this YouTube means to me that's how much you folks mean to me um, just without even meeting any of you face to face flesh to flesh whatever you know but yet we feel bonded we feel like a brotherhood here and that's really neat that um, and uh, speaking of which uh, you know there's been a lot of support here um, in so many ways and one one in particular, I would really like to thank uh, John because, uh, John, you know who you are if you're watching this. You really 
you went above and beyond friendship, man. I mean, for somebody I've never even met, um, you know, just it's amazing. Anyway, so hopefully that uh, journey will lead, you know, to a, a good thing, and let's get let's you know keep going. And things, you know, maybe changing around here, but uh, you know, we'll I'll let you know as things go on and things go. It, you just want to do things for the better and see what happens. So anyway, I consider you all a Batjack army. You guys are all brothers, you know, under the same roof right here at Batjack JW. And the same point of like me saying that, you know, how YouTube has helped me just forget about these problems here. Forget these, these, these issues I'm going through, whatever, forget it. Let's get to YouTube. And that's what I want. That's why I create this channel in the way I do. I try to make it so where, you know, you won't find drama here. You won't find politics and this kind of stuff because I just, I don't, I want that person to forget about this and get into these videos and be like, wow, this is cool. Let's have fun. And that's what we're going to do. So enough of all that, <laughs> um, you know, just, uh, let's just do this, you know? So let's talk about some of the things over here. Coffee tastes good this morning. We're getting on with time. So let's talk about some of this. Okay. Um, wow. Okay. What is that? <laughs> this is a airsoft gun. And some people, uh, you got to keep an open mind when it comes to this kind of stuff. Airsoft, a lot of times people just dismiss it as whatever, but airsoft is not only just fun but it's a good training aid. Like last week we talked about wax bullets being a training aid. This time around we're talking about wa these, uh, not wax bullets, uh, airsoft guns as training aids. Because a lot of these, now yes, you can't exactly just go to Walmart and pick up any old one. You do have to look online and uh, you just try to do a little bit of research on them and try to get a good one. This one here, I think roughly cost me about $100. I got it off Amazon. This is a model of the 1911. In fact, they call this the anniversary one. I got the box right here. Uh, I think that's what, yeah, the 100th anniversary. It's modeled after the uh, the old Colt war pistol. So it very much attracted me. I love the old school stuff. So it is, it very much is like the old pistol. Now, everything on this gun works just like how a 1911 works. You have the magazine release is there. Um, you know, the hammer is operational. The grip safety is operational. You got your thumb safety right here, okay? Slide locks back, slide release, okay? Everything is there. Even the sights is, is fairly terrible, like the, the originals were. Um, but it does operate on a CO2. So here's the CO2 cartridge. It goes into the magazine and everything like that. I do actually have a, a short video on this thing. But uh, anyway, what also um, kind of made me think about the CO2 thing uh, is because of the recoil that you get. It's, I mean, of course, yes, it's nothing like firing a, a live firearm. Um, but down in town, we used to have this thing, this simulated gun range, and it was, uh, it was called... Uh, the, the, the shop had it and you it was a good they took Glock 19s they they gutted them out um, the magazine was like this with a co2 the barrel was a laser system and it registered on screen and basically what that is is you felt the recoil you had something to react to and you know you could run through the scenario well same thing with these is you have a little bit of the recoil to react to you have all the functions and fundamentals of the gun that is operable that you can actually use so for its training goes, um, like out here in Hawaii, for instance, if you are not, you know, blessed to have friends with property, like, uh, you know, like I do, and I totally respect that and I totally uh, appreciate it because I know that the majority of people out here don't. And with me having the uh, privilege to go to these locations and shoot guns for you folks and safely and do videos and not have to worry about what the other people down there are doing, you know, so I can have complete control of the safety aspects of the range. Um, so other than that, there really isn't a gun range on, in Hawaii, in Kona. Uh, Kona is the, the town that we lived in. But so anyway, 
Uh, so something like this is very, uh, very feasible. You know, you can you can set something up in your garage. You can set something up in your room. Uh, I noticed that if you just take a cardboard box, put some paper in front of it, and put an old T-shirt in the back of it, or something like that, or a strip of carpet or whatever, it fairly stops the BBs. It's not very loud and everything like that. So really good uh, training aid, and it's fun. <laughs> I tell you a story. One night, uh, for some reason. At some point, we had uh, we had a lot of mice ran, running around. I don't know what was going on, but we just had a lot of mice. And I tell you, I would be sitting there late at night watching TV, and that's kind of gross to some of you. But I, I saw this little mouse running around my room. I said, "What the heck?" And uh, you know, just trying to, I'm like, "What am I going to do?" You know, I don't really have anything. I picked up this, and I literally laid on my bed, and I knew it was in the closet and went full-blown recon and waited and when he came out I saw him pop out and I shot him and he killed him yes I killed a mouse with an airsoft gun <laughs> I have killed um, out here in Hawaii we have cane spiders I, I, I just uh, for your information Batjack JW is afraid of spiders yes I don't like spiders at all and so uh, they freak me out I've uh, shot the spiders with this. <laughs> I, I know I'm not. I'm just going around killing everything, right? Um, so anyway, I uh, and mostly uh, the the big fat roaches that we get out here, the little cockroaches. Man, I've I've shot many of those things, just getting rid of them. So anyway, that, there's a lot of cool things you can do with this, um, you know, and it it's a great buy, and I, I highly recommend it. Um, they're fun, you know, and it's it's cool to be able to pick it up and just I mean it feels just like a 1911 no joke I mean and this one is what they call full metal so it is all metal the slide everything it's all metal um, so it does have some weight to it especially if you put the magazine in it does have some hefty weight to it all right so just something to you know an option to think about just trying to keep an eye on the time here okay so the other thing I want to talk about is the this is my Kimber 1911. Now we now we got a live firearm or a, you know a real firearm, not not loaded or anything. So anyway, I've had this for a number of years, I guess. I, I, what is it? Been three years, two years, maybe going on three years. I've had this thing. It's been a great pistol. Um, back when I first started YouTube, we uh, one of the second or third videos we did was with this 1911. Uh, I really like this gun a lot, and it's called the Flat Dark Earth Finish. It's the Desert Warrior, really great pistol. I bought it online, and so I happened to notice, I've always been curious about how well this finish holds up, and I happened to notice a small spot up here that either is like a rust or whatnot, but the finish had come off just a little bit. So I was going to talk about that in a video and do an update video and just kind of show you the whole ins and outs of this thing and the finish and how it's been holding up really um, but it's a great pistol it's it's good it does you know even for a um, it doesn't even have much play in it at all uh, it's a very tight pistol and that's the thing I wanted to, to really talk about because coming up next week I wanted to talk about I have a video we're gonna do um, about 1911 prices you know, and all that. My thoughts on like how much should a 1911 cost? Now, I'm not knocking the ones that do cost money. I'm just looking at it as an average person like me that's like on a you know a certain income that I can't just you know I don't have the luxury to just go out and go oh yeah oh five grand for this pistol heck yeah here you go you know I mean to me that's like man that's a that's a car. I mean, that's like, you know, look how many months of rent that is, you know, I mean, just to think to, to, you know, for my budget, that is, of course, you know, I mean, if you're just making a lot of money, who cares? But I'm just looking at it through my perspective. And I think a lot of people that are in the same boat with me that are just like, you know, we're not wealthy, we're not, uh, you know, making a ton of money. So, I mean, I can't say that because I haven't picked up one up and like, you know, I'm sure if I picked one up, I could probably see a little bit of, you know, okay, yeah, you know, I can understand this and that, you know, but anyway, my, uh, I'll talk a lot about that in the video, but my basic uh, impression is a Kimber for the price, you know, they are expensive. They're not cheap. I'm not going to say that, oh yeah, they're only 500 bucks, you know, 
they are up there. But it's about as, to me, it was affordable. I, I had to save my money to get it. I couldn't just like whip out the money and get it. I just, you know, save a little bit of money before I even start hunting for it. Um, but for what you're getting for a production line 1911 that has a lot of custom touches, um, really a, a good bang for the buck, you know, in a sense. So anyway, I'll talk about that uh, this coming week, things like that. And uh, my uh, also I'll talk about is my techniques on if I'm searching out for a gun uh, that I'm going to buy, what are some of the things I do? I always do a little bit of research on the gun I'm going to buy. I always check it out. Um, I always try to search out the best price. Uh, out here, we don't exactly have the luxury of having a gun shop around every corner, uh, but it's easier to go online out here and purchase it and get it shipped to an FFL. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to uh, have a video on that, going over some stuff, you know, just looking at everything. And I know this month we haven't really uh, had any range videos yet, but I promise you we will have uh, we will have a range video. We'll sneak in there. And I think it's going to be something that might make your day <laughs> with Model 29. <laughs> All right. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in to this radio show on Bad Jack JW. Hopefully uh, you made it this far in the video and didn't uh, go to sleep on me there. <laughs> but again, big... Uh, Big shout out to all of you folks, all of the subscribers, that all the people that view this channel. One million, baby, and we have surpassed the one million mark. Amazing. And I thank each and every one of you for that because you guys made it happen. I thank you. And don't forget, if you're interested, to follow me on the vlogs, uh, Day in the Life with Bat Jack JW. If that's interesting to you, if it's not, that's okay. But if you're interested, check it out. The link is in the description below this video, or just go to Combat 86 Radio Show uh, on my channel. You can actually search through it where it says the list. This is my friends, all those guys that make videos and everything like that. Um, it's in there as well. But anyway, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe, you guys. And uh, thanks for joining me on this journey. And we got many more miles ahead of us.